He never been turned off, and it couldn't be turned off by anybody inside the system. So the question was, I, okay, when I, I, my definition of dimensions are different. It's not length, width, and depth. That's the third dimension. Time is, is, is common for all the dimensions because we're part of the same synchronous system. So it basically drops out of the equation. But what separates us is how much information each dimension can control and manipulate, which also translates to how much energy or potential that entity has. So each level is an exponential increase over the previous. That's what was so important about the Hebrew alphabet stuff. You have the, uh, the eight-sided prism and then the four-sided one, which is offset by 45 degrees. Uh, that that tells you right off the bat, there's your eight dimensions. The stuff on top is the eight dimensions. Each, each side represents a separate carrier wave representing a lot of information. So an entity... So, so this is the interesting part. That when the universe is first created, when the Big Bang happens, what's the first thing that's created? Tell me. Light. Do you know? Well, I would say light. What's, light is information. Light is, the, light is information, a result of, of information coming into this dimension. What's the first thing that's created <clears throat> when that thing was turned on, when that dial was turned on? It's information. What's the first thing? <clears throat> it is. It's in the form of the quasars. And what do you see with a quasar? It opens up a portal and stars, millions to billions of stars pour out in opposite directions, 180 degrees opposite each other, pouring out from no space and time. Got it? Yeah. Remember what I said. So an eighth dimensional existence has a tremendous amount of information or can possess a lot of tremendous amount of information. And it has the same pattern. All these galaxies have the same pattern as the brain, brain, our, our brains. Yeah. I realized this program that cre that's creates the die hole, that's, that is the die hole. Where's the RAM memory? It creates the RAM memory. How do you like that for unique? The program itself creates the RAM memory. And that's the function of the stars. Then when it loads up with too much information, it then creates or gives birth to planets that does the same thing. It's like your computer, you go out and you buy a 32 gig or a 64 gig SIM for additional RAM memory, right? Yep. That's what it's doing. Are you suggesting that planet That's Earth is... That's why it's is, all connected. Are you suggesting planet Earth is using human brains <laughs> as the RAM for Earth? No, no. No, no, no. It's not that at all. It stores information that makes up everything that's around us, including us. Our brains have nothing to do with it. Our brain is a reflection of the universe that it's part of. Mm. The first thing that's created when someone turned on this die hold was a quasar, what we call a quasar, that poured out millions of stars to billions of stars because that's the RAM memory for this system. That's the amazing part I figured out only when I was doing the videos and I looked at the two pictures. The Germans did an excellent job of photographing or coming up with what a brain cells look like. And it matched what, what the astronomers, astrophysicists, came up with when they did a database of hundreds of thousands of galaxies. They said, my God, it has a pattern to it. That was the key. And it's the same program. What's true for the microscopic, your brain cells, is true for the macroscopic, the universe it's the same program okay. what do you think your brain cells do real quick right? Doug, uh since they we, store little bits of information since the universe began is it going to be infinite or will it have an end it looks like this this thing just keeps going until the people who created our die hole decide to turn it off and i got their answer and uh, and i think in the first book I had, God's Day of Judgment, I actually said why. I answered the three most difficult questions in the universe. Why was the universe created? If God created the universe, who created God? And then finally, 
What is man's purpose in the universe? If your philosophy of science can answer those three logically, you got it, period. Am I right? Yeah. I think my logic is correct. You can answer those. Those are the three most difficult questions in the universe. No more difficult ones than those. And I did it. I did it in, in six pages. I could have done it in three pages. Well, you and I share the same terseness. That's why. My first master's thesis was seven pages long. Right. <laughs> you got the idea. What was the subject? Uh, Milankovitch, Cyclicity, and the Silurian. That's a mouthful. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I couldn't say that three times and get it right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Doug, Listen, it's been a pleasure. Uh, said, thank you for your time, said, and let's let's keep in touch. Fair enough. Maybe we should all get together, all the groups and all the channels that deal with this particular subject, to have a common voice. The object would be to basically force government by having a lot of people know the truth of what's happening and force Congress to get the truth out of the CIA and whoever else has this secret. Otherwise, there isn't any chance of surviving this thing. Yeah, I'm not need, kidding. We need to work together to survive. I agree. Right. And first, it's really the, to disseminate the information that everybody, everybody knows this thing's going to happen. And that's why this lie about global warming crap. Yeah, that's that's the they're trying to give an alternate explanation for what they know is going to happen. All right. Well, I'm in. That's I'm, the whole I'm all in. Anyway, let's, let's do it. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, you probably you probably know them better than I do. All of them. And and I'm going to mention that at this conference on the 14th or 15th. And you do the same. Talk to the other guys who have other channels about it. If you have their phone numbers, or can contact them. And let's network. It's the only way we're going to get the truth out and that government does something at least to save our children or grandchildren. You got the picture? Amen. Let's do it.